Okay, so in this problem, we're given a circuit that looks like this. Um, 25 volts connected to 156 in series with 156.25, and um, that whole thing in parallel with 125 ohms, and that's in parallel with 5 microfarads, um, switches open at time before time zero, and um, that the capacitor is connected in parallel after time zero with a 312.5 millihenry inductor. And we have to find the voltage and um, the uh, current, the general step equation formula for the uh, current epoxy inductor uh, for time greater than zero. Okay, so we have something here that doesn't look like a parallel RLC. We have an inductor and a capacitor in parallel, and we need to get this somehow to be um, a single resistor so that we can analyze it. So, or well, not a single resistor, but we need a re these to become a resistor in parallel. So we have a parallel RLC circuit with some kind of a, some kind of power source. So um, the way we will do that is we're going to use source transformation to force this into a current source with one resistor so that we'll have a parallel RLC circuit. After we do that, we're going to figure out whether this is a critically damped, over damped, or under damped system by comparing alpha to omega naught. And uh, once we figure that out, we know what our step equations will be. And um, we also know what the coefficients will be. So um, before I wipe out this part after the source transformation, I'm going to find out the initial conditions across the capacitor, and then we'll replace it. So, first thing we do is source transformation. Oh, you know what? I don't want to lose the drawing because I'm going to redraw it. But let I'm going to find the current across the capacitor or the voltage across the capacitor first because um, because I don't want to redraw it. So. The initial voltage across the capacitor, see before time zero, the circuit looks like this, plus minus 25 volts, 156.25, um, 625, okay, we need to find that. And this is going to be just a simple uh, voltage division problem. So. VC is going to be um, the 25 volts times 625 over 156.25 plus 625. Put that into your calculator, you should get 20 volts. So the voltage source has charge the capacitor up to 20 volts. So let's put that information up here because we'll come back to it. So VC initial is going to be 20 volts. And let's go ahead and talk about the current through the inductor, right, at before time zero. It's totally disconnected to any power source, therefore it's uh, zero. So I L of zero is zero amps. Okay, now we'll do the source transformation. Okay, um, we have 25 volts in series with a 156.25. Well, that is the same thing as 25 over 156.25, which is, comes out to be, how much is that? 160 milliamps. So that gives us a current source, 160 milliamps, in parallel with a 156.25. Well, that whole thing is going to be 160 milliamps, 
of 56.25. That's in parallel with the 625. You can find the REQ, the equivalent resistance of that, that will be 1 over 156.25 plus 1 over 625. All of that inverted, and that will give you 125 ohms. So now we can replace this with a 160 milliamp current source in, uh, in parallel with a 125 ohms uh, resistor. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to redraw the circuit as, um, as the switch closes. So we have 160 milliamp something that looks like a parallel RLC circuit. What we have to do now is, oh, so we transformed it. Now we need to find alpha and omega for the, to figure out what our step equations will be. Well, alpha is 1 over 2RC. That's 1 over 2 times uh, 125 ohms times 5 microfarads. Put that into your calculator. You should come up with 800 radians per second. Omega naught is 1 over root LC. That's going to be 1 over root 3.12.5 millihenries times 5 microfarads. Put that into your calculator and you should come up with 800. And therefore, the system is critically damped. And, okay, so now we know what type of response we have. We know the step equations. So let's write the step equations. Okay. These colors so I don't confuse myself. We have two step equations. Um, first step equation is, well, we know our general equation. Let's write that out. Um, general equation is going to be V of T is equal to D1 TE to the negative alpha T plus D2 E to the negative alpha T volts. Okay, so immediately we have some information. We have alpha. We use it to figure out what type of system we have. Um, so we can replace the negative alphas here with negative 100. So, e to the negative 800t, negative 800t. Okay, so now we need to find d1 and d2. And for that, we'll use um, the two coefficient equations. Um, the first one is v of 0 is equal to v final plus d2. And the second, um, the second equation that we need is dv dt is equal to um, d1 prime minus 800 d2. This one is the harder one, so we'll step that, put that over there, and do it in just a second. dv dt is equal to d1 prime minus 800 d2. Okay, so let's solve for D2. Well, what do we know about V final? V final. As time goes to infinity, the circuit looks like this. We have 160 milliamp source. And that's in parallel with the resistor. And the capacitor isn't open in the DC steady state and the inductor is a short in the DC steady state. So what's going to happen is a resistor in parallel with a short 
the um, electricity will take the path of zero resistance and we'll get the 160 milliamp going like that. Oh, I'm sorry, I just hit the current, the final current, sorry about that. Um, final voltage, okay, my bad. So we will have a final current. You'll, that's part is uh, that's how that part's gonna work. But uh, for the final voltage, well, in the DC steady state, the inductor is a piece of wire. It's just a uh, it's a short, so it has no voltage across it, zero volts. And um, the initial voltage across the inductor is well, it's in parallel with 20 volt source, so therefore that is 20 volts. So 20 volts equals zero plus D2, so we have our D2 value, it's 20 volts. Now we can replace the D2 with 20. And now just it's a matter of finding D1. Well, D1, dB dt is equal to D1 minus 800. D2, which we now know is 20, so dB dt, we don't know what dB dt is, we know what that is, so um, that's negative 16,000, so let's just erase that, put negative 16,000 down, negative 16,000, and so now we need to find dB dt, and we will find dB dt by using the identity that current across the capacitor is the capacitance times dB dt. Therefore, dB dt is the current across the capacitor divided by the capacitance. Okay, so let's solve for um, the current across the capacitor. Well, to do that, we'll use KCL. Oh, let's, let's show this over here. dB dt is going to be current across the capacitor times divided by the capacitance. Well, here's IR, here's IC, and here's IL. Initial current across the inductor we know is zero. So, well, let's write the equation at the top node we have 160 milliamps going in, therefore that's going to be minus 160 milliamps um, plus IR plus IC plus IL. Well, and all that has to equal zero. This is zero, we determined that. So we, what we need to do is figure out IR, what IR is. So IC will equal 160 milliamps minus IR. Well, IR, using Ohm's law, is just voltage divided by resistance. So you take 20 volts, which is the initial voltage, divide that by 125 ohms, and we end up with 160 milliamps minus 160 milliamps, and that is zero. So since I see is zero, dVdt is zero also. Now we have, <clears throat> so now we can solve for D1. Our equation for D1 over here is D1 prime minus 16,000 is equal to dV dt, which is zero. So therefore, D1 prime is going to be 16,000 volts per second. Okay. Now we, have, we can replace this with 16,000. And we have our step equation. So 16,000. And that is part one. Now the second part um, is finding the current. And I'm going to break that into the second video because I know I'm going to run over 15 minutes.